Right, so in this video, we're going to our main focus is going to be on identifying, learning to identify domain and range, and then also even and odd functions. And again, we're just going to run through it really fast because this should be a review. Um, and this is in section one, two, functions and graphs. So first of all, to identify a function, uh, it has both dependent and independent variables. And your dependent variable is your y. Your independent variable is your x and on your axes remember this is your y so this is your dependent axis and this is your x and your independent axis and then also another name for your x is your domain so these are all your domain values and then another name for y is range okay so your range are all of your dependent values and your domain is all of your independent values so when you're determining domain and range of functions, it would make sense to determine your independent values first because they determine what your dependent or your range values can be. So definition of a function, again, uh, it's just a function from a set D for a set R, so domain to range, is a rule that assigns a unique element in R to each element in D. So each element in the range to a specific domain value. All right. So the natural domain is the domain without any restrictions. And if you have a domain with a restriction, this is what it's going to look like. For example, when you have y is equal to x squared, and the domain is restricted to be only positive values. And so, you know, x squared would look like a u, but if it's greater than zero, then this is your actual graph because the domain is restricted. And then also understand on page, you can take a, look, take a look on page 13, but the difference between brackets and parentheses, so these are brackets, okay? If you go from using brackets from A to B, uh, what this means is that it includes A and B, and so it's inclusive of A and B. So brackets are inclusive, and then also remember that you never use brackets with positive and negative infinity because remember um, infinity is more of an idea than a number and so it can never be included because you can never actually reach infinity so the easiest way is two simple steps to identify domain and range number one is just to graph it if you have your graphing calculator you're allowed to use your graphing calculator then graph the thing and it's easier to look at your graph. What are all my possible x values? What are all my possible y values? Are they restricted at all? And then secondly, think, think, think. Okay, first start with your independent variables. So that would be your x. So what can my x possibly be? What's the largest? What's the smallest? Uh, are there any restrictions? And remember, in order for a restriction to be, that would be like in a natural log function, you can never have negative. Or in, like we're going to go down here, this is a square root function. Okay, you can't have negatives under square root, so you're looking for what restrictions do there have to be for my function, and then go from there using, okay, given my smallest value for x or my largest value for x, how does that determine then my range? Let's take a look at this example here. You have y is equal to 2 plus the square root of x minus 1. So first of all, looking at your domain restriction, this value here has to be greater than, not greater than or equal, or actually, yeah, greater than or equal to zero because you can have the square root of zero. Square root of zero is just zero. Then we solve this, and so x has to be greater than or equal to one. Okay, so then that's our domain. We're going to go ahead and write that out. Write it both ways. X is greater than or equal to one, or in set notation, using the brackets and parentheses, so brackets because it can equal 1, so it goes from 1 to infinity, and you use a parenthesis. And now for your range, think of your smallest possible value um, that you could put in there for x, which is 1. If you plug 1 in there, that would be 1 minus 1, that's 0, so your smallest value is just 2, so your range and you can never get a negative value under the square root, so your smallest, absolute smallest value is 2. So your range has to be greater than or equal to 2, or 
to inclusive all the way to infinity. Okay, so then that's domain range. Just be able to find the domain range of any, any given function, uh, both algebraically, just the way that we did here, or graphically, one or the other. Now we're looking at even in odd functions and their symmetry and what that means. Uh, because later on when we go to graph, find derivatives, integrals of these types of functions, uh, it makes it a lot easier and it becomes really important to understand if something is symmetric, more importantly vertically, um, so it's, if it's an even function. Even if it's an odd function too, because there's special properties to even and odd functions when you're finding areas under the curves, which we'll be, we'll be doing later on. So it's extremely important that we know what we're doing now. So first of all, let's take a look at even and odd functions. So if it's an even function, when you plug a negative value into your function, okay, when your input is negative, your output is positive. That's if it is even function. If it's an odd function, your input is negative, your output is negative as well. So your input and output are the same. Okay, so that's the algebraic way to think of even and odd functions. You can also look at their graphs. So the graph of an even function is symmetric about the y-axis. So it's got the vertical symmetry. And then the graph of an odd function is symmetric about the origin. So then that's the, it's got y equals x symmetry. And it's symmetric about the origin if a rotation of 180 degrees, if you can rotate, rotate it 180 degrees about the origin, leaves the graph unchanged. All right. I think next page. Yeah. Okay. So now let's determine whether this function here is even, odd, or neither, because some of, a lot of functions, actually most functions that will be uh, looking at this year, not going to have any kind of symmetry. Okay, but so looking at this, don't graph it. Just take a minute and think about it. Is it going to be even or odd? So pause the video, write down your thoughts. Maybe you can try to sketch it. I'm not asking you to sketch it because I don't even think I could sketch that. Um, but try to determine if it's even or odd. Okay, coming back to this one, it looks like um, if you put this, it's x to the first. All right, and so let's go ahead and try. It. We're going to plug a negative value in. Okay, so let's say this is f of x. We're going to plug a negative value in. And so that would be negative x to the first plus negative x to the third. Now the question is, no matter what x is, you're going to have a negative plus a negative, right? Because when you take something to the third power, negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. Something to the first power, it's just negative. So negative plus a negative. That means that your output, this f of x is also negative, and by definition, it's odd. Another way you could look at that is look at its individual parts, its individual pieces or terms. Okay, in this case, both terms are odd. So the sum, not add, but the sum of odd terms are all going to be odd as well. That may, that's what makes an odd function just looking at it. But to be sure, plug negative values in for x and see uh, what your overall um, f of x or y value is, if it's going to be positive or negative. Okay, so then that defines even and odd functions. And then also, uh, remember earlier we did the domain and range to be able to find the domain and range of any function and then determine if it's even or odd with or without, more importantly, without uh, the graph.